Hey everyone, welcome back to Gannett Review. Today I'm checking out another one of Mark Ziegler's latest listings. This time's a 2006 Mainship 34 trawler. At the time of shooting this video, she was up for sale for $199,500 and she's laying in Jacksonville, Florida. This is a great option for somebody that's looking for a boat that's easy to maintain, that's easy to handle and is capable of doing a great loop, being a perfect liveaboard. Or just looking for a weekend cruiser. She measures in at 38 feet overall. She's got a maximum bridge clearance of just over 16 feet, maximum draft of just over 3 feet, and a beam of just over 14 feet. You've got easy boarding access on both the port and starboard quarter, but you also have easy access by getting on the bathing platform that they can then lead through that transom door. Regardless of how you do it, look at all the handholds that's in place, so that you've always got something to hold on to. And that extended fly bridge gives you an almost hard top effect, that way you get extra shade and protection. You've got wide decks as you make your way towards the bow, again you've got that high guardrail making you feel safe and secure. The filler caps are to the side so you don't trip on anything. You've got easy access to the lower helm. There's plenty of room in that coach roof to sit out or lay out if you wanted to. And then as we make our way to the bow, you see we've got the fender baskets, that way you can store the fenders without taking up storage space in the lazarette or in the lockers. And this one is equipped with both an anchor and an electric windlass. The windlass can be operated here at the bow, it can also be operated manually, it's got that winch handle right there as a safety measure. And I like when the anchor's on the bow sprit like this, that way it keeps it further away from the hull whenever you're doing the launch and retrieval. Then as I pan the camera around, you'll see this one's got that timeless classic design. It's also got the window covers in place, which you'll see the advantage of once we get inside. And you've got the full enclosure up on the flybridge too. And I just love how easy it is for a boat of this size to walk around the side decks. Great for when you're cruising, great for close quarter manoeuvring, but also if you're ever going through the lock gates, it'd be really easy to do as well. And once you make your way to the aft cockpit, you'll see this one's been designed for both cruising and fishing. You've got storage compartments that's along the transom. These are insulated and self-draining, so you can use them for storage, but you can also fill it full of ice, and then that way you can bring home the catch or take out the bait. They're good size storage compartments too, so if you do want it to have just as general use, there's plenty of room in here for ropes and fenders. There's additional rod holders mounted out here. And then as I mentioned earlier, we also do have that transom door. This leads out to an extended bathing platform. There's also a davit system that's been installed on this one. So that way you can have a tender without having to worry about towing it and all the heartache that that can lead to. And finally in the starboard quarter, we've also got a hot and cold outdoor shower. And that way you can rinse off if you've been in the water without having to worry about going into the lower accommodation. And speaking of the accommodation, I'm always a firm believer that the first impressions is key. And whenever you step inside this one, I just fell in love with this boat. I would love to own this one. This is my type of boat. You could easily use this as a liveaboard if you wanted to. It just feels like home comforts everywhere. But there's tasteful upgrades. Things like the lights have got the USB and the dimmer switch on there. You've got the window blinds with the protection on the outside, but most of the windows do it open for additional fresh air. There's plenty of headroom in here. I'm six foot two and I've got no issues at all. You notice that grab rail down the center line. That way if there is any sort of swell, you've got something to hold on to. To starboard is where you're gonna find the main breaker panel. And I like the fact that this is really close to the main door. That way when you're coming in, it's easy to switch on the cabin lights and things along those lines and understand what needs to be switched on or switched off. Got flat screen TV, stereo controls up overhead. You get your traditional clock and barometer. You get a nice little dining table, and this has got a folding leaf that you can expand out. I like the fact that it does drop down, that way it doesn't take up as much space when it's not in use. You've got a very comfortable leather seat into port, and that seat actually folds out, and this becomes a double bed, which is a great setup because this one's only got one cabin down below, so that's where you've got somewhere for your friends or family to stay on board. The countertop space leading to the galley, that then doubles up as being like a little breakfast bar. But if I move the stool out of the way, you'll see that there's even storage under here. And throughout the entire yacht, all the storage drawers, lockers, cabinets, they all have a locking mechanism. That way, while the boat's cruising, you don't need to worry about anything popping open and falling out. And everything stays safe and secure. 
on the starboard side is where you're going to find a lower helm. This one's got easy access to the deck. It's also got a full bank of electronics, so you can cruise from down here or up on the flybridge. You got your multifunction display with a chart plotter and radar. You got your autopilot. You got full engine instrumentation, but this one's also equipped both bow and stern thruster, so it makes that close quarter maneuvering far easier, especially if you're going to be doing this single handed. And I like that large traditional ship's wheel. I always feel like boats like this need to have that nautical vibe to it. You don't want it being all modern and futuristic looking. And then from here, it's just a couple of short steps that takes you down into the galley. And by doing so, this gives you even more headroom at the galley itself. Plenty of natural light. There's a good amount of countertop space in here. You've got a convection microwave oven. You've got a stainless steel sink and that faucet's got like a shower head feature to it. And it can easily retract or pull out as needed. You've got storage for the trash can to the side. And even that's got the locking mechanism to it. You got the two burner electric stove top. You got more than enough storage underneath. And that includes one door that when you open it, it's actually got drawers on the other side. Ideal for things like your utensils. And then on the opposite side, we've got a large fridge here, and that just slides right out. And notice there's also lighting that's on the floor level. That way you've got the courtesy of lighting, which I'm sure is a big help at night. And finally for the galley, we've also got more additional storage cabinets up overhead. With the all-important coffee maker sitting down below on the countertop. And to starboard, where you're going to find the heads compartment on board. There's only one head on this yacht. But this one's got access from the main passageway. And you can also have private access to the forward cabin. And this one's got fresh water capacity of 70 gallons, a 30 gallon holding tank capacity, and 250 gallon fuel capacity. I like the fact that the toilet and the shower are separate in here. And there's also that little seat that's molded into the side of the fiberglass. So you can enjoy that shower whether you're standing up or sitting down as you need to. And as with the rest of the yacht, there's plenty of headroom in here, plenty of storage. There's more opening hatches for ventilation and natural light. And then on the bow is where you're going to find the owner's stateroom. This one's got a large double island berth. It's easily accessible on either side. You can see the amount of natural light that's coming through, especially in a day like today. Not only do you have a large opening hatch overhead, but you've got also opening portholes to the side as well. And for storage, there's various hanging locker spaces, there's drawers, there's cabinets, and there's even storage underneath the bed itself. Most of the storage options are all cedar lined. And I also want to point out that there is no sign of any dampness on board. That's a boat that's been well ventilated, well looked after. There's two air conditioning units on board. And you could easily call this one home. Whether you're looking for a permanent liveaboard, whether you're looking at tackling the Great Loop, looking for an extended cruiser. And at this price point, in this condition, I'm sure this one's going to get attention from Mark real soon. And so make my way through the yacht, we'll lead out to the aft cockpit, and I'll then take you up into the flybridge. To get up to the flybridge, there's a really good handhold system in place, makes it easy for all your friends and family to join you. You've got very comfortable seating as well as a cockpit table and that fully enclosed flybridge. But before heading in there, I want to point out that the mast that you see for this one is on hinges. So it's just a couple of wing nuts that you take off and this one can drop down and there's even a support in place to hold the mast. So if bridge clearance is an issue, this is a yacht for you. There's also space out here where we've got a large storage box. Plenty of guardrails up here. You've also got a non-slip deck material and barefoot and it works really well. And then as I make my way into the canopy enclosure, this canopy looks and feels as if it's almost new. But not only that, look at how the fact that the framework is even covered and protected. You also have great headroom in here. You can roll this up in sections. You can take it all out completely. You can have it as a bimini top. You've got a whole host of combinations. And underneath all that seating, there's more storage compartments as well. There's three forward-facing seats, and these are typically covered up. The flybridge itself, all the electronics is covered up normally. It's just a yacht that the owner has obviously taken pride and ownership from. 
But sitting at the helm, you get a full bank of electronics up here. You've obviously got the full engine instrumentation, but you've got two multifunction displays. One's been set up on the port side as a chart plotter. You got your compass in the middle, you get your autopilot, and then the multifunction display that we've got set up on starboard by default is set up as a radar. You get your engine throttle, the engine controls, and this one's got both the bow and stern thruster. You got your drinks holder. You've then got controls for the windlass. And then you'll see we've also got the VHF radio up here as well. And then finally, I'm going to show you the engine compartment. And getting into the engine room is like no other boat that I've featured on the channel so far. To get into the engine compartment is the bottom steps that lead to the flybridge. They fold out. And you've got this passageway that leads down below. And once in here, you see that we've got full access to all the steering gear. Plenty of storage down here for ropes, fenders. You can put engine spares. You've got an oil change system that's easy access. You then have your Kohler generator. And in front of that, you've got your Yanmar diesel engine. This is a Yanmar 370. It's approximately 370 horse. She's only got 1,060 hours on the clock. This will cruise at a very fuel efficient rate of around 8 knots. But she's only had a top end probably somewhere in the region of 13 knots. By being single engine, there's also plenty of room down here for the maintenance. You can see you can actually have crawl space in front of the engine to go around so you've got access to either side. And you've also got sight line in place for the fuel in front. I'd like to thank Mark for the opportunity to come on board and check this one out. I'd love to hear your thoughts and comments. If you can leave a comment down below. If you haven't done so already, if you can hit that like and subscribe button, it really does make a difference. I look forward to catching you on the next one. Thanks everyone.